This is the lesson for handout D. And looking at the first problem we see here, it's a word problem that asks us to find the height of a triangle, given some information. Now, we're not given the exact dimensions of this triangle, so what we're going to end up having to do is write expressions for ones that are unknown. So let's start with our formula for a triangle. And again, here's our my picture of the triangle. And we've got our base right here. And the height is the distance between the vertex and the base that makes a perpendicular. That's why I drew that little square right here, showing that that's a perpendicular angle. And so our formula goes this way. It goes area equals one-half the base times by the height. And so what we're going to end up doing <coughs> is substituting an expression in for the one that they give us the expression for. So it, for instance, here it says the base of a triangle is. Is means equals. So we're going to write B equals and then three less than its height. So we're going to take away three from the height of the triangle. The area is 14. So let's go ahead and substitute these numbers, that number in for the area, in this expression in for the base. So instead of A, we're going to write 14 equals 1 half the base of H minus 3 times by H. <clears throat> and so first, I'm going to take this 1 half and multiply it over that expression. So now I've got 14 equals 1 half H minus 3 halves times by H. Well, let's go ahead and now multiply the H over this expression. So now I've got this, 14 equals 1 half H squared minus 3 halves H. Now this seems complicated, so let's go ahead and eliminate these fractions. Since we've got an equation here, we can do this. So if I multiply this equation, the whole thing, by 2, every single number there, notice that the 2's will now cross cancel. So now I've got this equation. I've got 28 equals h squared minus 3h. So now what I'm going to end up doing is using factoring to solve. So I'm going to move this 28 back to the other side. So I'll subtract it from all sides. <clears throat> and now I've got this. h squared equals, or not equals anymore, but minus... So h squared minus 3h minus 28 all equals 0. So now we can go ahead and factor, and it ends up being h minus 7, and then h plus 4 is the factored form of this. So we can go ahead and take these factors and set them equal to 0, and we get two answers, 7 and negative 4. Well, since we're dealing with distance, we're going to go with the positive one. So that means h equals 7. So 7 units, let's see what units they are, inches it looks like. So 7 inches is the height, and that's what they want. Notice that this time they said find the height, but if they wanted the base, then we'd have to substitute back in to find out what the base is. <clears throat> well, let's take a look at our next one here. And it says that the length of a triangle is 20, or length of a rectangle is 21 less than 4 times the width. So on this one, what we're going to do is the same sort of thing as the last one. We're going to write an expression in place of the length, because it says the length is, is means equals. So we'll write down L equals 21 less than 4 times the width. So i got to take 21 away from 4 times the width. The area is 18. So what we'll do is in place of this formula, area equals length times width, we're going to write some numbers. So area is 18. So in place of A, we put 18. The length, in place of the length, we're going to use this expression, 4W minus 21. And then we're going to multiply by the width. So multiply each of the terms there. We've got now 18 equals 4W squared, and then a minus 21W. And so we go ahead and move that 18 back to the other side. And we can go ahead and start to factor. So now we've got 4w squared minus 21w minus 18. So the factored form is going to, I'm going to go ahead and start with a 6 and a 3. Those are the numbers I think that multiply to make 18. Now I just need to fit the 4 in there somewhere. So if I put a 4w here and just a w here, you should see that the outside make 24. Inside make 3, and those can subtract to make 21. If I make the 6 negative, it'll make it a negative 21. <clears throat> so when I come up with my two answers for W, I end up having to subtract the 3 and then divide by 4. So it makes a negative 3 fourths, 
is one of the values of w, the other one is going to be positive 6. Since we're talking about a distance, we're going to use this 6 as the number. Now, let's see what they want. They want the length, not the width. So we've got to substitute this 6 in place of w right there. And that will give us our length. So length is 4 times by 6 minus 21. So do that work there. You get 24 minus 21 makes 3. So 3 inches <clears throat> is the length of our triangle. So you got to be careful and see which one they're asking for. Next type of question is going to ask us to simplify. Always take out common factors first. That's the important thing. So put the x on the outside. Do the division, and we've got an x minus 1. Down here, we've got a trinomial, no common factors, so it factors as two binomials. It's going to be an x minus 3 and an x, uh, actually, let's make it x plus 3 and an x minus 1 to subtract to make the positive 2. So at this stage, we can go ahead and take out those common factors of x minus 1, and we're left with that x over x plus 3. Same sort of thing on the next one. Go ahead and factor. No common factors on the top, so we just have to factor it as we go. And so I know 3 and 1 multiply to make the 3. If I put the 4x here and a 1x, actually, let's fix that. Let's go ahead and do a 2x and, a, and another 2x, because I saw that the outside-inside terms need to subtract to make 4. And in order to do that, I need to get a 6 and a 2 to subtract to make 4. So negative 6x and a positive 2x will subtract to make the negative 4x. Now, this is a difference of squares. This factors to a sum and a difference. We end up with a 2x minus 3 and a 2x plus 3. And now we can go ahead and take out those common factors of 2x minus 3. So what do we have left over? Well, we've got that 2x plus 1 on top and the 2x plus 3 on the bottom. Look at our next problem. It's a multiplying rational expression. So always take out common factors first. You always have to factor in order to reduce. So <clears throat> if we take out the 4x, we've got an x plus 2. And then we continue on the top of the fraction. We've got a difference of squares. So it factors to x minus 4 and an x plus 4. And so on the next one, it's a trinomial. It factors to two binomials. It's going to end up being an x plus 3 and an x plus 4. And down here, we've got a common factor of 7x squared. So that's going to go on the outside of a parenthesis. Do the division, you got an x plus 2 left over. So we can go ahead and take out common factors now. And so I see that the, <clears throat> the x plus 4s will cancel. We can cancel out one of these, uh, x plus 2, let's go ahead and take that out. One of the x's will be canceling. There's only one on top and two on the bottom. And that's it. So what's left over? Well, we've got a 4 times by x minus 4. And down below, we've got a 7x multiplied by x plus 3. And if you want, you could leave it like that or multiply it out. Either way will work. Next problem is a division problem. So you got to multiply by the reciprocal. So make sure you take the reciprocal of just the second fraction. But it's pretty much done the same from there. So it's a difference of squares on top. So x minus 3x plus 3. And then over here, there's a common factor of 4. Take out that 4 first. And it will factor one more time. So let's go ahead and look at what's left over. x squared minus 9. So let's go ahead. And remember, this is going to go on the bottom. So I just made a mistake there. So let's go ahead and fix that. <clears throat> I put the 4 on top. Going a little bit too quick, I guess. So this is going to go on the bottom now. So we put the 4. And it's at x squared minus 9. So I know that factors to x minus 3, x plus 3. <clears throat> let's move on to the bottom here. So we'll continue on the bottom. x squared minus x minus 6 factors to an x minus 3, x plus 2. And then here we've got a trinomial with no common factors. So 2x is what we're going to start with. And numbers that multiply to make 3 are 3 and 1. If I make them both negative, they'll multiply to make a positive, but add to make negative 7x. The outside and inside terms will. So we go ahead and take out those common factors of x minus 3. And we got an x plus 3 that cancels. And that's it. So what do we have left over? Well, I've got the 2x minus 1 and an x. Oh, the x minus 3s are going to cancel. So let's go ahead and take those guys out. So we still have this, this 2x minus 1 on top. Down below, we've got a 4 and an x plus 2. And that's it. So you can leave it like that or multiply out the denominator. Either way will work. Looking at our next one, it's a adding of rational expressions. So we've got to come up with a common denominator. 
So I see that the 4x needs just an extra x, where the 2x squared needs just an extra 2. And I can come up with that common denominator. So 6 over 4x to the second plus x squared plus 2x over 4x to the second. So now as you see how they have the same denominator. So let's just rewrite it as x squared plus 2x plus 6 all over all over that same denominator of 4x squared. And that's our answer. The numerator does not factor, so we wouldn't be able to do any canceling in that case. Looking at our next one, same sort of thing, but this time we have to multiply by the other's denominator in order to have the same factors. So we'll multiply by an x minus 1 on the left side, x plus 1 on the right. Treat this minus sign as a plus negative, and make sure you multiply negative 4 over that addition. So same thing over here, multiply the 3 over this subtraction. So the common mistake is people leave it in the factor form and don't do this, this distributive property. Or even once they do do the distributive property, they don't actually uh, combine the like terms. And that's what we end up needing to do, is once we distribute, we need to combine the like terms here and see what's left over. So for instance, in this case, I have 3x's minus 1x makes a negative x. Here I have negative 3 and negative 4 make a negative 7. So it's negative x minus 7 over x plus 1 times by x minus 1. So looking at our next one, it's a looks like an opposite direction problem. So whenever I see opposite direction, I know that they're going to have one card going in one direction, the other in opposite, obviously. And it looks like they're going to end up being 297 miles apart. Now that's a total distance, though. So neither car travels that 297 miles. So what we're going to end up doing is calling one of those distances d. The other is going to be a total, total minus d, 297 minus d. So this is the way we're going to set it up. Distance equals rate times by time. We'll start with the rates. So one car travels at 44 and the other at 55. They leave at the same time. It's the same time. That means that... We're going to have both variables t, and let's call one of them d, and the other is going to be the total, minus d, and that's the key. Once you've got that, then you just substitute. So I'll take that 44t, and I substitute that in for d right down below. So I got now 297, 297 minus 44t, and then this equals 55t. And now I just do an opposite operation. So notice on the opposite direction problems, you're going to end up adding the two rates together because the distance is a total distance. And neither car has traveled that distance, but together they travel that distance. And so if you add their rates, then divide by that sum of the rates into that total distance, you get your time in which they get that far apart, three hours. Let's take a look at our next problem. It talks about Ted's average driving speed for a... Five-hour trip, so that's a total trip, is 60 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and multiply those numbers. We get 300. Now, this is a total distance here. It's a total distance. And so we're going to end up needing that in the next part because it says the next three hours, he only drove 50 miles an hour. That means he only has driven half the distance. So if we subtract these two, that tells us how far he has to go on that remaining two hours of the trip. And that's what they want to know is what, how fast did he have to go that remaining two hours? Well, all we do is do the division and we find out that he had to go 75 miles an hour those final two hours. Now let's take a look at our last problem here. Here we have a 30% solution is to be mixed with a 50% solution to make. So to make means we've got a total. 200 liters of a 42% solution. So what we want to do is find the amounts of both amounts. So with the 30% and the 50%. So whenever you're given a total, just like the opposite direction problem, you're going to set up a, an expression with the total minus to that amount, the unknown amount. And so we have now 30x equals 10,000 minus 50x. And then on this side, we end up with 8,400. And so all you're going to do is add these amounts together. You can combine these two terms right now, and we end up with a negative 20x, and then subtract these two amounts, and we end up with 1,600. And it's going to be a negative because I'm taking away more than what I started with. 
And so when you divide by that negative 20, we end up with x equals, uh, zeros cancel out there, 2 into 16, 160 makes 80. So 80 liters of the x amount, which is the 30%. And so to find the other amount, all you do is subtract it from 200. So 200 minus 80 gives me 120 liters of the 50%. So those are problems that you'll see on handout 7D.